every automaker around the world today has some kind of electric vehicle. At one end, some are making limited production compliance cars to satisfy emissions requirements. At the other end, others have one or more models available with decent range and performance at a price point that won't break the bank. But for the most part, even though mainstream automakers may try and talk the talk when it comes to EVs, the majority can easily be seen as more than a little two-faced, you know, telling journalists how keen they are to make the transition to electric, but then failing to follow through, or funding the de electric vehicle development with gas-guzzling SUVs. Yeah, Chevy, Ford, and others. I'm looking at you. Yet earlier this week, something happened that has never before happened in the auto industry. And interestingly, few journalists are talking about it, but it could be the biggest thing to happen in the EV world for a while. A mainstream automaker has just announced it's ending internal combustion engine vehicle sales in one, if not the largest, auto markets in the world, shifting its endeavours entirely to electric. The automaker in question? French company Renault which has been at the forefront of affordable mass-market electric vehicles since 2011. And I think we do need to give Renault some serious kudos for this. On Monday, Renault announced that it would be stopping all of its internal combustion engine vehicle production, as well as sales in China, following what has been a pretty terrible year for its Chinese sales figures. This is very different to seven years ago or so, when Renault confidently predicted that it would be selling 550,000 cars per year in China by the end of the decade. Last year, it sold just 180,000 cars, split between gasoline models and its all-electric Renault City KZE. If you haven't seen the Renault City KZE before, it is well worth a look. It's a compact crossover and it's built with affordability in mind. And yes, it does lack some of the bells and whistles of more expensive cars. Its 33 kilowatt motor and 26.8 kilowatt hour battery propel it to a top speed of around 105 kilometers per hour, which isn't so fast. And range is rated to 271 kilometers, but that's on the notoriously optimistic NEDC test cycle. It does have DC quick charging though, meaning it can use China's growing network of DC quick charging. It can quick charge just like its more powerful, better equipped siblings in other parts of the world can. But the best bit for Chinese customers here is the price. It retails for about $8,700 equivalent in China. It's coming to Europe next year as the Dacia Spring with an upgraded battery pack and drivetrain. And in Europe, I'm predicting it will sell pretty well as an affordable mid-range electric car designed for a market that to date, to be honest, has zero electric models to choose from. But let's get back to China and Renault's 100% switch to electric vehicle production. The Renault City KZE is actually built by a partner of Renault's, EGT New Energy Automotive Company, which is jointly owned by Renault, Nissan and Dongfeng. And it's partnerships like this with other Chinese firms that will eventually form the basis of Renault's new electric-only portfolio in the People's Republic of China. According to reports, existing electric vehicles will be made, but Renault is also committing to building four new electric vehicles for the Chinese market spread across a passenger and light commercial market segment. These new vehicles will also be made with partnerships through other automakers and will become the only brand new Renault vehicles that we will be able to buy in China. But the question is this, what's really driving the decision? Is it Renault deciding to switch to electric, just electric? I'd love to say yes, but I'm slightly pessimistic these days about automakers and their motivations. If Renault was making money selling internal combustion engine vehicles, I hate to say it, but I suspect it would still sell them if it was allowed to. In this case, Renault's internal combustion engine vehicles are not making the company a lot of money, and thus, I'm guessing going electric makes more sense. That said, let's also not forget that when it comes to availability of electric models, Renault is still by far ahead of the competition in terms of variety. So it's conceivable that the decision really was driven by more non-financial motivations. In Europe, Renault has the Tiny Twizy, the Zoe, the Kangoo ZE and the Master ZE, 
And in other markets, specifically South Korea, its Fluence ZE is still made under license from Renault. And there are new future all-electric models promised by Renault for different markets around the world. Frankly, if any automaker is really pushing the affordability of electric vehicles right now, it is Renault, above everybody else. For an automaker of Renault's size, remember it's far smaller than many of its rivals in the marketplace, I'd say that's pretty darned impressive. Which leads us to the question, what of Nissan? Nissan has been Renault's alliance partner for many years and it too produces electric vehicles in partnership with Chinese firms for the Chinese market. Will it follow suit? Maybe. Nissan is similarly struggling with its Chinese sales and it's conceivable a focus on electric only in China could help Nissan through some really tough times. But Nissan of late has really gone off the boil when it comes to electric vehicles after the whole Carlos Ghosn thing and I think it's similarly likely that we'll see a split in the Renault-Nissan alliance altogether, seeing Nissan go towards hydrogen fuel cell vehicles as most of its fellow Japanese automakers have. So there you have it. Renault's going all electric for China and maybe the rest of the world will follow suit pretty quickly. Either way, kudos for Renault in leading the way in China. And yes, I know Tesla and other electric only automakers are ahead of even Renault, but switching from internal combustion to electric is no small feat, especially when sales of internal combustion engine vehicles are usually the things that end up funding electric vehicle development. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. You can send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon or you can send us a coffee using Ko-fi. I will be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, stay safe, wash your hands and keep evolving.